Um, and today we get to talk about NFTs and IP, which is one of my favorite topics. So we're very lucky to have um, three other uh, amazing panelists, so I'll allow them to introduce themselves. Hey, thanks everyone for coming and thanks for having me here. I'm super excited to be here as well. Uh, I spoke last year, actually, and it was a, a fun time. It looks like there's a little more people here than last year, but I like that. Uh, my name is Zach Kurtz. I am the CEO and founder of Sneaker and Streetwear Law Firm, uh, which is a law firm that specializes in sneakers and streetwear. Uh, we have an intersection in digital, digital footwear and really just the metaverse as well, and that's sort of why I came here. <laughs> Happy to talk to you guys about IP as well. Such an exciting audience. I'm happy to be here. Like the energy you're giving back is, this is dope, seriously. Right, what did I expect? I'm the, I'm the go-to-market expert on a panel of lawyers, right? And you're like, what are you doing here, Rich? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Rich Laster with GrowExpand.com. We are a go-to-market strategy firm. We work for a lot of venture capital firms, mostly East Coast, uh, helping companies that they decide to invest in, but are weak on the sales and go-to-market strategy. We design that go-to-market strategy. We've had about seven successes. They're all NDAs, but we're very proud of them anyway. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Charles Chen. Uh, I'm also an attorney, <laughs> uh, but also I'm uh, uh, starting uh, building uh, and, uh, platform allow the creators, uh, copyright owners to issue NFTs and uh, selling or like uh, licensing uh, their uh, copyright uh, to the fans and the investors and also allow the ordinary fans to purchase a portion of the copyright of like music or movie or TV show or whatever copyrighted works. Um, and I'm really happy to be here. Last year, I'm also here. Um, I think uh, this year's maybe the market is a little bit of cooling, but uh, <laughs> I'm so glad that uh, we have still so many people uh, join us and uh, see the future uh, of NFTs. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I think that leads, you know, Charles, a great point, right, is crypto is very much, you know, you, you see the attention given to crypto based on you know financialization you know the markets what's going up what's going down and you know I, I know I know myself and, and, and other panelists are interested because of the the technology and the the ability so my, my question for, for you guys is you know thinking about you know kind of the, the work you've done over the past few years and given kind of all that's happened in the the financial crypto markets you know, over the past, <laughs> you could say, six months, year, uh, whatever timeline you want to go, just h how do you see what, you're, what you've been doing and your approach to intellectual property? How has that changed, you know, o over that past, you know, year? And then given, given that and where we are today, where, where do you see intellectual property and NFTs, like the outlook from 2023, kind of the, the near ter term and, and intermediate term future for, for this intersection and yeah. Moist, that's a great question. Um, so the challenge we're seeing from the go-to-market side, the sales and marketing side is we're seeing a devaluation of the dollar, right? We all know what's going on globally right now. And we're talking about intellectual property, right? Which is a law under the jurisdiction at maximus of the United States but we're playing with, we're playing a global game. So it's, it's, it's an intellectual property and intellectual property attorneys more than ever are like super important before you ever bother going to market because <laughs> you're like, yo, this is hot. Oh my God, yo, we got a mint it, dude. Oh, I've got the gas fees, awesome. Can't sell it. We're in violation of about 13 laws in <laughs> six countries, all 51 states. Like, you, you really have to, more than ever, uh, dot your I's and cross your T's. So before you go to market, step one is always make sure there is a market, understand who's gonna be buying this, but step two is more than ever, call your intellectual property lawyer. 
Well done, well done. The only non-lawyer up here saying to speak to the Torah. We did not pay him for that, yeah, I swear. He, he can say it. We don't, we, you know, we, we, don't, we don't need to. <laughs> uh, I think he hits the nail on the head, though. You know, my strategy as an attorney uh, going to market for this really hasn't changed, you know, and it's exactly what he said. Speak to your lawyer, you know. I know I wear this shirt that says, uh, talk is cheap until you hire a lawyer, and it's true, but at the same time, it's a lot more expensive if you're facing a lawsuit months later. So I think it's important to have open communication with the whole team, you know, lawyers, businessmen, you know, everyone. But lawyers are even more important in this new space because it's, it's new, you know. No one knows what the heck they're doing. There's finally some case law out there that we'll probably talk about, uh, you know, Hermes Birkin, Meta Birkin, all, a bunch of other cases coming in. But, you know, that little bit is what we're using to guide us, you know. So I think it's really just important just to reach out, speak to your attorneys, and like you said, before you go to market with whatever it is, make sure you do your proper trademark searches, your clearance searches, you know, whether it's a sneaker or a name of a, you know, a project, whatever it is, just be open and communicate. That way you're, you know, facing less, <laughs> less issues down the road, so to speak. Yeah, I think uh, when I was um, getting to know uh, NFTs, that was back into uh, 2018, that at that time, like the Crypto kitties and crypto punks, they, are, they were hot, right? I think at that time, nobody talks about copyright or I, like intellectual properties, right? They just uh, say, okay, this is NFT, and uh, you, if, you, if you just purchase, then you, you have it, right? And usually, like, the, 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 the creator just give it out <laughs> for free, right? And uh, nobody really care about it. But um, uh, in the recent years, I believe more and more people are thinking about, okay, so if, if we can get some, like, copyright, like by holding an NFT, right? And also uh, also the um, uh, uh, creators, like for example, uh, Board Apes, right? Uh, and many other uh, projects, they want to give some license to the holders of the NFTs. And by doing so, basically the NFT like slightly changed from just copies, right? Copies of, uh, of certain works into copyright or like a certificate of, of, of copyright. And uh, I think that changed the value of NFTs and also give much more potentials for the NFTs and uh, generate more use cases for NFTs. And I, th I, th I think this will give us a brave new world for NFT participants, either as an attorney or as a creator or as a fans or like holders. You can have think much more about and what can we do with NFTs and uh, definitely we need lawyers and also like maybe regulators to work together to curve like maybe uh, m some new regulations, s new legal frameworks for NFT industries to grow, right? And also to protect the rights and interest of copyright owners and also NFT owners. Yeah, yeah I think that's a great point that, you know, l looking back to, to 2018 and people are just saying, it's an NFT, here you go. We don't need to think about these things, right? I, I think very few projects, uh, very few, you know, protocol, you know, wh whatever it is, you know, I think a, a hopefully at least a, a lot fewer people are, are starting it, going into it that way, right? Even even the established players from this past cycle are, are saying, well, you know, you, even you, you mentioned CryptoPunks, right? You go labs, like they, 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 we have our terms, this will look like, well, let's, let's update them, right? Let's make them better. Let's have them more fully describe um, some of the things that are happening here, and you know, there there really can't be evil licenses again that were you know released last year that said you know here here's a even if you don't do anything you don't talk to anyone here's a a baseline that you can use that at least helps you consider like you know hopefully some of the the top ten points. So I, I think I think that's right. I think it's you know it's it's becoming more sophisticated about you know the, the whole ecosystem saying you know here's the baseline you know and how can we kind of stand on the shoulders of the learnings from 2018, the learnings from 2020, 2021, and now here we are in 2023. So I think, when, you, know, you know, feeding into everything you guys are saying, you know, even go to market strategy, it's, well, y your strategy has to be different in 2023 than it would have been in 2018. So, um, Rich, maybe you can talk about, you know, h how you approach go to market strategy and, and you know, the, the kind of your thought process, you know, now, kind of <laughs> everything that's happened over the past, let's, let's call it five years, and, and how that's evolved and, and, and what it looks like to put together a sophisticated, you know, global go-to-market strategy, you know, today? Uh, good question. Thanks, Moish. 
we are, so I'll use a real life example without breaching confidentiality because there are way too many lawyers in the room for me to do that. <laughs> um, we are taking a pharma SaaS to market right now and what just happened, what just got finished is the blockchain build out. So in the delivery of SaaS services before you go to a website, you log on, you create an account, okay, woo, how many users are we gonna have? 10, woo, what's the integration? <laughs> Headache, okay, oh, you consult for the integration, 50,000, ooh. And now it's like, okay, wait, we can make this way, way far simpler. We're gonna blockchain the whole hell of this. Everything's a smart contract, right? We're understanding what applications you already use, where the data already is, what's already integrating with that synchronously, right? So that we know it's an active sync, right? This is an Oracle, no insult. To, are there any Oracle <laughs> lawyers here? Sorry. Like, but like, no, it's, everything's moving at the speed of light. And what I love about my son and daughter's generation, the millennials and the Zs, they're like, but can it go faster? And it, it excite, at first you're like, you're, you're the guy with the gray hair, and I'm the only guy with gray hair up here. And you're like, well, why don't you slow down, kid? That's not the way it's done. But if you shut the hell up and you listen to the new generation, the, so many problems are solved when you say, can it go faster? Because look, imagine being able to deliver your product or service to China an hour from now, right? What do you need to do? You need to align with a 3D printing shop in China. Oh, nobody's, nobody thought about 3D printing in other countries until, what, a year ago, first time I heard of it being done. Like, no, global shipping? Okay, COVID proved that there are some holes in that, right? Oh, you know, your car is stuck on a container. It's been there 18 months. So everything, listen, thinking outside of the box that that cliche is dead. Now we realize that there is no freaking box. And it's like, how are you thinking and how can you make it happen? So, Zach, turning to you, I mean, it's interesting, right? Because rich perspective, like speed, 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 let's go, let's get it done, let's get out the door, right? Make some money. All right, uh, but you mentioned, right, there's, there's now a plethora of lawsuits that, that, have, that have occurred, right? Um, you know, the, the, the StockX suit. But uh, let, let me ask the question a little bit differently, right? How, from your perspective, right, working from, you know, streetwear brands, sneakers, like how much of this litigation, you know, it, it, I guess we're a couple of years in probably to some of these big lawsuits that are, that are going on. How instructive are they? Like, how, how can, can you actually take much guidance from them in terms of like, all right, I'm ready to go to market, I'm ready to go, can I do it? Like, Zach, what do you think? Um, you know, like, wh where are you in your thought process about, you know, th thinking and, and kind of taking in some of these cases and, and, and helping, you know, people that want to go to market kind of think through those legal risks? Yeah. I think you're right. Uh, as you know, most cases settle, you know, so there's not that precedent to look at. Uh, we were fortunate with the Meta Birkins case to sort of actually get a little guidance there. Uh, it's still being appealed, so you never really know. Uh, there's also uh, a very important trademark infringement case that was just heard by the Supreme Court recently. So that could sort of throw all these rulings off. So there's a lot of, you know, kind of what if factors and a lot of, uh, you know, not knowing the future. Uh, and I sort of hate going back to what I said earlier. That's even more important. Uh, another reason why we need to do these clearances and do these checks and you know get your lawyers and such involved because like you said there have been things that have changed you know so you could sort of use you know Nike and StockX you see Nike's very uh, being very litigious lately so you could sort of just gauge that and know hey maybe I don't want to mess with Nike if I'm making a sneaker <laughs> NFT you know what I'm saying <laughs> uh, uh, sort of that kind of guidance and at, at the same time there are still laws in the metaverse. Uh, I know we've been saying this for, you know, five years now and <laughs> such, and like some of these cases actually prove the point exactly, you know. Uh, I'll stick with uh, Meta Birkin's case because, uh, just briefly touching on that one, uh, at the time, Hermes didn't have a trademark in the metaverse for the word Birkin. Uh, and then Mason Rothschild went and did his thing and uh, Hermes sued 
them for that. And they ended up finding in favor of Hermes and pretty much, again, just as generally speaking, pretty much just saying that yes, there are trademark rights in the metaverse. Uh, they considered a lot of other factors like if Hermes uh, wanted to go in the metaverse uh, or if they were just gonna you know, stay with physical products. But overall, uh, you know, Hermes won. So that sort of enforces the rights here that you know, even if you don't have a, another trademark registration in the metaverse, if you still have sneakers and you know, normal registrations for class 25 and physical products, it could still transfer over there. You know? So it's just kind of that kind of guidance that we could use from cases like that to say, hey, don't mess with this company. You know, do this first or apply for your own trademark first or you know, some sort of guidance like that. Ultimately, we're just lawyers. You know? So it really comes down to the business. I, I can't tell you how many times I've given guidance to a business in sneakers or street or anything and they don't listen to me. And that's fine too, you know? Uh, but at the same time, it's a risky kind of thing, you know? So if they don't listen to you, they better be ready to find a lawyer if they need it or, you know, just, just live with those risks. So our job as lawyers is really just to do exactly what Moy said, just see what we have out there and give the best guidance and advice that we can with, you know, limiting the most liability and risk. Yeah, and I, I think your mention there of the Supreme Court case, which is the, um, I think you're referencing the Jack Daniels yeah, case VIP versus VIP products. So if you don't know about this case, um, it's, it's basically there's a Jack Daniels bottle. Uh, everyone kind of, if I just said those three words, you, you probably can picture what that looks like. And someone made a, a, a VIP products made a dog toy that was making fun of it. That you know, it's, it, I forget what the. What I think it said uh, uh, forty percent made of poo or something like yeah, that right, on the right. bottle. So it was like clearly a parody, clearly trying to make fun of, you know, uh, Jack Daniels and and all that. Keep going. So so the idea is okay. Well, you're saying we have we have a law of a metaverse, right? There there are laws. We we can apply those laws to the meta. But how does a dog toy that, that, that makes a poop joke on it apply to the metaverse? Well, it, it speaks really directly, I think, to, to trademark laws application to, you know, what is a commercial product? What is an expressive product? What's parody? What's fair use? And these are all concepts that, you know, if you're, if you're trying to clear uh, before you go to market, you're going you're gonna to need to at least think about, hopefully discuss with an attorney about, but th th all of those concepts are up in the air, and the Supreme Court is like asking questions, trying to figure out how this applies to a dog toy. Uh, how, <laughs> what what chance do we have of uh, of, of NFTs, right? So uh, there there is definitely frustration of of you know well, it would be fantastic if there were clear laws and this is how you apply it in, in every circumstance. But I just don't think we're there yet, um, and it's gonna, probably going to be you know something that we are going to have to continue watching and see how it evolves as as it as it goes forward. So, um, Charles, turning, turning to you, in terms of um, y you're, you're working to basically then I imbue NFTs with IP rights downstream, right? So can you talk a little bit about how y you approach that and then may maybe how <laughs> this, this uncertainty in, 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 in legal principles and, and these multi-jurisdictional questions that Rich was talking about, how does that play into all of that? Yes, definitely. Um, that's a wonderful question because... Uh, I, I constantly talk to like uh, music labels or like movie studios and also sometimes like the investors of uh, 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 VCs, uh, something like that. And uh, usually a common question people will think about like, okay, there's no law about Web3. There's no law about Web, uh, like Metaverse because they think, oh, this is brand new, right? There's, there's something new, but not really. <laughs> Come on, there's a copyright, right, and a securities law, securities regulation, and also like privacy law, data law, many other kind of laws regulating different kind of stuff. Even though you are thinking about you are uh, like you are issuing NFT or whatever you call it, there are some like legal concept that may be applied to that, right? There's under this uh, current legal framework, the industry is regulated. So and also there are guidelines for you to rely on to make your product working, right? If you want to really uh, issue an NFT and give some license to the users, you can do that even under the current legal framework. But you do need to talk to some lawyers and not just one lawyer. Usually, because blockchain is like global, right? You, you, it's not like uh, like website, you can just say, okay, I'm going to give a license to you like working in the US or like for a certain year, right? But it's usually blockchain is like globally. So they have ac global access. So you have to think about how can we like uh, tailor the product or the protocol to meet 
the uh, juris different jurisdictions requirements regarding that. So you have probably you need an international law, uh, legal team for you to, to do that. And uh, another question is, usually they will ask, okay, so we have a smart contract. Now we can just go for it. We don't need any, we don't need any other legal contract or legal team. But in fact, mo in the most cases, smart contracts is neither smart, smart nor contract, right? <laughs> Think about it. Smart contract, you cannot amend it, right? <laughs> Usually, if you, if you put it online, that's it. It's really difficult for you to say, let's have amendment, right? Let's have another version of it. And usually it is not contract, it's just a code, right? It's a data, it's a code. So if you want to enforce your legal rights in the real world, you really have to make sure that the smart contracts, they have ability for you to enforce it, to make it a, like something like a contract, right? Then you have to really form an agreement under the current legal framework. They have, then you have to think about what the legal requirement to form a solid, require, a, a solid uh, agreement, right? Then you have to think about how can we build the smart contract with my engineers and attorneys together to make it work. So I think many music labels and many, many uh, um, like uh, movie studios or like gaming companies, they are really trying to understand these trends and they are open to talk with their in-house lawyers or outside lawyers and to work with uh, uh, NFT projects to work together to make this solid. Yeah, that's fantastic. So we're running out of time. Uh, just, you know, like to think, given that we've talked about, you know, everything we talked about here, um, you know, I, I, I see there's some recurring themes, but I'm, I'm just trying to think how, how you guys, like in closing this out, um, you know, what you're looking forward to most in, in, the, in the space here in terms of you know your, each of your applications, and we can just kind of go down the line, um, just just in terms of the application of, of, of IPs and NFTs uh, going forward, like the you know th thinking forward, you know three, five, ten year timeline, you yeah. know. I think as everyone echoes up here, IP is, is extremely important, uh, especially in the space that we're in, and it's it's early, you know, uh, it's, it's still super early. And I think it hasn't even caught on yet. You know, a lot of people are still scared by what happened the past couple of years. So I think uh, the importance of IP and you know is only going to grow. And it's based on everything we said. The more knowledge we have about what we can and can't do is only going to help us. It's only going to help these creatives find new loopholes and new avenues to to work with us for. And, and we love that. You know, so I'm super excited. Uh, like I said, I, I I'm, I'm sort of biased because I love I'm working in sneakers and streetwear, but I think we're sort of the forefront with this. Uh, where you know we're attaching physical items to digital stuff all day long, and it sort of gets like the people who have no clue what what it is involved. Like my mom, when I explained to her, she's like, "How is that gonna turn into a pair of shoes in a month?" You know, and like, ding, it rings off on her door or something like that. So mm -hmm. it's cool for me to surprise people like that and sort of show them the space and show them what it can do. And I only think it's only gonna get bigger and better. Uh, and on that note, I know Artifact and Nike are doing a really big uh, release relatively soon with uh, NFTs uh, that are related to specific characters, demons, angels, and uh, they have specific colorways of shoes for each character. And it's, I'm, I'm a holder in that, and I know it's been a, almost a year or something, so we've been waiting for our shoes. But I think as soon as that <laughs> happens, and the shoes and stuff get out there, and people see physical, tangible assets, it, you know, it, it's only gonna get people more excited. <clears throat> the next three to five years, for a guy who wants to see you actually be able to exit your contract with the venture capital firm that gave you that $30 million because your idea was so hot. Um, for me, I say understand what these three gentlemen just said. It's not just US IP, it's international IP because you gotta understand the markets you're going in. Okay, look, look follow these four people up here. I'm being humble and including myself at the same time. Follow us on Twitter because we we're running out of time. But really, before you worry about making money, worry about who you're helping and how you're impacting and how you can leverage tech to do that. Yeah, I think time is up, but uh, just one thing. Uh, I think IP is everything in Metaverse, in Web3, and it's everywhere. So basically, if you can use IP wisely, then you can get a lot, 
real value out of the NFTs and all the assets in the Web3 world. And uh, let's enjoy that. <laughs> Thank you for attending. Appreciate it. Thank you. Great panel. One man's loop.